Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today, I'm in the capital of Tatarstan, Kazan. Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm in Kazan, the capital of Tatarstan, here in Russia. As you can see, I'm in front of the biggest, most popular site here in Kazan, the mosque, and I'll get to that in a minute. But first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about this city. Kazan is over 1,000 years old and it's the sixth biggest city in Russia by population. Uh, it's a really important cultural and religious center here in Russia and is a must visit for anybody visiting this country. Kazan brands itself as the third capital of Russia and that's because of its cultural, political, religious significance here in the country and actually it was one of the host cities in 2018 for the FIFA World Cup and I'm sure it was an amazing time when it was flooded by hundreds and hundreds of foreigners. Today the weather in Kazan is super windy and I'm a little bit worried I won't get very good audio so I'm going to take lots and lots of video learn lots of facts and when I go home I can do a voiceover with lots of information about this city for you guys. We begin here in Kazan outside of the number one tourist attraction, the mosque. The mosque was built in only in 2005 even though it looks much older and it actually replaced an older mosque which was destroyed 500 years ago in one of the wars between Kazan and Ivan the Terrible. The mosque has five towers and one dome in the middle and is open for free for tourists. It actually has three levels inside the mosque. The bottom level is for praying for men, the middle level is to pray for women and the third level is for tourists with a balcony so you can look over. So I'm going to have a look inside this mosque right now and you should take a look with me. Many people say Kazan is the city where Islam meets Christianity as Islam is a major faith in Tatarstan as 33% of an estimated 3.8 million population are Muslim and 30% are Orthodox Christian. In 1990 there were only 100 mosques but the number as of 2004 rose to well over 1000. Because of this it's no surprise that Russia's most famous and beautiful mosque is in the capital of Tatarstan. The mosque is the main thing here in the Kazan Kremlin, but it's not the only thing. The Kremlin has a cathedral, it has a monastery, and has a ton of museums. And I'm going to walk around now, take some videos, learn some facts about it, and when I get home, I'll put a voiceover over this next bit of the video, and you can learn some things that I learned and have a look around this UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Kazan Kremlin. The Kazan Kremlin was built at the behest of Ivan the Terrible on the ruins of the former castle of the Kazan Khans. It was declared a World Heritage Site in 2000. It was built in the 16th century and has snow white walls, quite a few towers and the palace of the President of Tatarstan and this cathedral, the Annunciation Cathedral. The Annunciation Cathedral was built in 1552 immediately after the capture of Kazan by Ivan the Terrible. It was originally a wooden church and the current structure dates back to 1841. For a long time the cathedral was the centre of Christianity in the Volga region and a necropolis for many Kazan archbishops.
Ulitsa Balmana, Balman Street, is the main street stretching from the mosque to the town centre. It has boutiques, souvenir shops, kiosks, cafes and bars. Many of Kazan's sites are located nearby, but the street itself is also an attraction for the statues, fountains and other decorations found here. It's a great place to come during the evening for the nice atmosphere. The unique historical flavour is given by unusual sculptures you'll find along the way. A replica of the carriage of Catherine II, the fountain with pigeons, an Arabic street clock and even a monument to Fyodor Chelyapin. The Museum of Soviet Life was opened in 2011 in a former communal apartment known as a Kommunalka. The museum now has various exhibits recreating everyday life in the Soviet Union in the 1970s and the 1980s. Special attention is dedicated to Soviet schools, the Soviet Army, music of the period both Soviet and Western, socialist art and propaganda. You can even try on Soviet clothes. Petersburg Street is one of the main streets coming from the city centre and this small section is designed like St. Petersburg itself. This theatre, Ekiat Tatar Puppet Theatre, is one of the main sites further along Petersburg Street. With its stained glass windows, white stone turrets and columns, it looks like a big fairy tale castle. But personally, I think it looks ghastly. The Palace of Agriculturalists is a grand and rather extravagant building for the headquarters of the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Production and runs parallel with the river Kazanka. The palace was built amid some controversy due to its proximity to the UNESCO protected Kremlin but nevertheless has since become one of the most famous modern sites in Kazan. The Kremlin Embankment is a fairly recent landmark in Kazan which has become a favourite place of rest and entertainment for locals as it's one of the most beautiful places to spend time in the city. It is regularly decorated and this February it's decorated with a Valentine's theme. There are loads of restaurants here and even a skating rink. It's not a particularly touristy site, but I really liked how this mosque looked right by the river.
Closer to the centre, the park called Black Lake is turned into an ice skating rink. This area reminds me of Patriarch Ponds in Moscow due to the building styles and a large lake as a focal point. In a small park on Freedom Square opposite the State Academic Opera and Ballet Theatre is a statue of Vladimir Lenin. Lenin lived in Kazan from September 88 to May 89 and briefly studied in Kazan University until he was expelled for his political activities. The building behind Lenin is the State Council of the Republic of Tatarstan. Just outside the centre of the city is the Temple of All Religions. The complex incorporates a mosque, orthodox church, Buddhist temple and a synagogue and in total it has 16 domes representing 16 world religions. No services are held at the complex and instead it's used as a kind of cultural centre. It's still under construction and I found it to be quite a strange place with a very weird vibe. I also went for a lovely walk around an area called Novia Tatarska Sloboda. It's primarily a Muslim area with lots of Islamic shops, halal restaurants and of course mosques. My favourite was this one, Nurulla Mosque, built between 1845 and 1849. Getting around Kazan is mainly by bus and by foot, as the metro only has one line. It's worth looking inside just to see the interesting Islamic designs though. Thanks for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please press like and if you want to see more please subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.